my dear students today we are going to discuss about mercerization so mercerization is a process in which cotton is treated with caustic especially sodium hydroxide solution to improve the properties such as the fiber strength shrinkage resistance luster and the dyeability this mercerization process is being especially done for the uh, cotton material to enhance the uh, dyeability and the luster of the textile material we are not doing this mercerization for any other textile material apart from cotton the caustic actually rearranges the cellulose molecules in the fiber to produce these changes when we treat this uh, uh, cotton material with caustic what happens is that the caustic which is being absorbed by the cotton rearranges the cellulose molecules in the fiber to produce the above set changes in the normal cotton fiber coming to mercerization mercerization is defined as the treatment of cotton textiles with a concentrated solution of alkali consisting the following conditions first is the application of caustic soda solution at 31 to 35 percentage at temperature of around 15 to 18 degree celsius so this is the concentration of caustic to be used under temperature of the mercerization process and next a dry period of 1 minute on an average so as to permit diffusion of alkali into the fiber is being essential that is once the alkali being absorbed by the cotton has to be diffused so the dry period of about 1 minute has to be given and next the warp tension during alkali treatment and the stretching the bed that is width wise uh, of the fabric during washing or nursery to prevent shrinkage of the uh, textile material after the moisturization process once the tension is there along the width wise or the uh, length wise the shrinkage of the fabric occurs so uh, the warp tension during alkali treatment and the weft tension of the fabric during the washing are necessary to prevent the shrinkage of the fabric after the mercerization process and finally washing off of the traces of alkali from the treated fibers is very much essential to have a neutrally neutral fabric and coming to the process parameters of the mercerization process the first one is the caustic strength uh, caustic strength the swelling increases with the increase in the uh, concentration of the alkali so the we should take care of the um, percentage concentration or the percentage strength of the uh, caustic which is being used for this mercerization process and the next is the dry time that is the feed rate of the fabric into the mercerization machine so the dry time uh, is a very important parameter in determining the efficiency of the mercerization process and next is the tension as I have stated you earlier, we should take care of the warp tension and the weft tension to have the proper shrinkage of the textile material. Improve, when we have tension, it improves the luster and the tensile strength of the fabric. So, the tension should be in a nominal way. And next comes the temperature. Cellulose swelling increases with the drop of temperature. So, the temperature of the process is a very important uh, process parameter when we are going for the mercerization process and finally after the mercerization process the fabric should be neutralized so this uh, diagram illustrates the uh, image in a longitudinal view and cross sectional view of a unmercerized cotton material and a mercerized cotton material so look, look at the longitudinal view of cotton which is being not mercerized you see the first image and the longitudinal image of the cotton which is being mercerized you see that some convolutions are there and it is in the form of a kidney bean shape where here the no convolutions is there and it is in the form of a round shape you can also observe these changes in the cross-sectional view in the below diagram in the first diagram and in the diagram in the right hand side only because of this uh, the changes occurring during the mercerization process the luster and the durability of the textile material is being to a large extent. Coming 
forced to increase in texture. Unmoisturized cotton has a general appearance of flat ribbon with a spiral twist and its surface is rough and non-uniform and its cross section is irregular and ear shaped. So this is what we have observed in the uh, previous diagram of uh, unmoisturized cotton in the um, uh, longitudinal view and in the cross sectional view also. And all these factors result in less texture. So this is in the first case. After moisturization, when a cotton fiber is brought into an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, cellulose begins to swell immediately and the fiber is elliptical in section with a few seconds and on further swelling becomes circular. This uh, changes from the um, flat ribbon to the circular shape is being illustrated gradually in the structure. Structure 1, structure 2, structure 3, structure 4, structure 5, structure 6, structure 7. You can see in structure 1, the convolution is seen in the structure 1. Whereas in the final 7th structure, you cannot see any convolution. And there the fiber is initially in the kidney bean shape. And finally in this structure 7, the fiber is in a round shape. Only because of this changes, that is the change of cellulose from cellulose 1 to 2 and the changes of the structure from external structure from kidney bean shape to round shape, the luster of the cellulosic material is being improved gradually and is now said to have a good luster and the diability of the fabric and the strength of the fabric is also being enhanced. So this is the diagram illustrating the increase in the luster of the fabric. And what are the machines which are uh, commonly used for the mercerization process and what are the uh, basic units to be present in a mercerization process is being listed out here. Coming first to have the basic sections in a mercerization uh, machine, we should have first the mercerizing section that is the impregnator followed by the fusing section followed by the stabilizing section that is in the stabilizing section we are providing the enough dry type and the reduction in concentration of the alkali followed by the fusing section followed by the washing and the neutralization section so these are the basic sections to be available in a mercerization process and next comes the types of mercerization process the first is chain, mer chain mercerization process and the next is chainless machines that is chainless mercerization process coming first to chain mercerization process in the chain mercerization process, in order to make up for the shortcomings of roller mercerizing machine, a clip strider is used for post, for post mercerization treatment in which a big waist tension is applied, the most alkali is being showered off, the fabric kept on the center followed by thorough alkali removal and neutralization using an open with washing machine. And as for practical machinery, a heavy padding mantle is used for the application of the alkali solution in the two dip, two, two dip method with sufficient time allowed for penetration and swelling of the fabric in the tiny cylinder instead of undergoing an operation using so many rollers and so many solution as in roller mercerization to ensure uh, reduced use of alkali. So here in the chain mercerization process usually the tension will be applied in the length by length of the fabric here in the chain mercerization process um, the tension is being applied in the widthwise of the fabric through a uh, stenter that to a uh, clip stenter machine so this is the main aspect in chain mercerization process where the mercerization process is being carried out under tension is being carried out under tension that is uh, tension is being applied to the fabric upon widthwise and lengthwise so upon lengthwise, usual process we have the lengthwise uh, tension. Here the stenter is being involved after the uh, application of the alkali to have to maintain the tension of the fabric. Coming here to the schematic representation of chain, chain mercerization process. So uh, truck one, first alkali impregnation manual, alkali concentration of 35 to 40 degree to add at a temperature of 40 degree Celsius and a time of about 65 to 75 seconds. So the grey fabric is being padded by in a alkali impregnation tank. Next is being taken to the second alkali impregnation mangle where the alkali in, in, uh, concentration is between 55 to 65 degree to order with a temperature of around 
27 degree Celsius and the duration of uh, contact of the fabric with the alkali is being 60 to 75 uh, seconds. After the incorporation of the fabric with alkali, it is then taken to the strengthener where the stretching and washing unit is being available. Uh, after this, it is then taken to the recu uh, recuperator unit where steam treatment is being given to wash off the residual alkali which is being present in the fabric. After that, actually uh, the actual nozzleization takes place in the stunter unit and in the recuperator unit. After that, it is then taken to the hot water, uh, hot water wash, then to the storing process, cold water wash and finally we are getting the nozzleized fabric. Here, what do you mean by storing is that, it is nothing but the treatment of the nozzleized uh, fabric with the dilute uh, mineral acid, especially uh, dilute sulfuric acid or uh, hydrochloric acid is used for this process. The neutralization process is said to be the soaring process. And coming next to chainless moisturization process. Here the chainless moisturization process, the tension uh, on the fabric is nominal. So in this method of moisturization, running fabric through a number of rollers without the use of tip center is being passed through a number of uh, set of rollers present next, next to it. So the method of moisturization of running fabric through a number of rollers without the use of a tip center is also called the roller moisturization process. The machine used as a number of stainless steel rollers or else stainless steel and rubber rollers or a relatively large diameter uh, tire zigzag in close contact with each other inside a long uh, truck containing this alkali with the lower tire designed to submerge in alkali solution for the moisturization process. And what happens during this chainless moisturization or the roller moisturization process is that the absorption of alkali solution and fabric swelling takes place as the fabric sequentially glides over the surface of these rollers and although this movement from roller to roller in close contact with them reduces the widthwise contraction to a minimum. So as here, as I stated earlier, we are not engaging the tip center to have the widthwise contraction. Here, rollers are being used upon the rollers, the fabric are being traveling with the top roller and the inversion roller. The resulting fabric expansion remains within a limited range, thus displaying the mechanism of moisturization at a fixed neck only. So this is one that is the diagram illustrating the chainless moisturization process. As like the chain moisturization process, here also initially the fabric is being treated with the trough containing the alkali with the padding mangle. So here the, the padding mangles and the dummy rollers are being engaged for the treatment of the fabric with the alkali solution. After that, uh, for caustic recovery, we are employing this counter current washing system. That is, I think you all know what you mean by counter current. The, here, we are having the four troughs containing the water. That is, the water from the fourth trough will be used in the third trough. Water from the third trough will be used for second. Uh, waste water from the second trough will be used for the first. That is, for the economy of water. Here, after treatment with alkali, it, it is being uh, washed by the counter current washing system and then it is then taken to the recuperator. That is, as uh, stated earlier, we are having the set of rollers stated here, which is being cleaned by using fresh water. So, this is the diagram illustrating the chainless moisturization machine. And in parallel chainless moisturization machine, next is the parallel chainless moisturization machine. What do you mean parallel chainless moisturization is that no padding mantle is being used for the treat, uh, treat, uh, process. The, the parallel chainless moisturization uh, machine, the fabric is just soaked in linear with solution and then after giving dwell time of 40 to 45 seconds, this is being stretched on expanded rollers as on chainless uh, machines. Then the fabric is washed and being neutralized. So this is the diagram illustrating the parallel chainless moisturization process. You see here no padding angle is being involved for the impregnation of the uh, or the treatment of the cellulose material with uh, alkali solution. You just see it is just treated with alkali by using set of rollers. That is what it is being mentioned as parallel 
chain does commercialization process. And once uh, 